Hello there, I am Bendegu Shuli and I will be showing you a couple of tips and tricks in Aptar's reinforcement add-on. Reinforcement manual complex elements in columns and beams. The reinforcement solution is able to automatically place rebars and stirrups into the column and beam elements with a simple rectangular section profile. But in many cases, this section is not rectangular. It can be trapezoid, rounded, or a custom polygon shape. The reinforcement add-on offers manual reinforcement for these profiles. Where the complex reinforcement can be saved and applied for all similar beam or column elements in the building model. Here I prepared some elements which are necessary for this work. I will show it in 3D and it is visible that these elements are only simple reinforcement elements and they are not combined yet. I start to create the complex element for a column. First I had to define the column's geometry. The special element that helps me is called RF underscore concrete and I can find it in the loaded reinforcement library. I select it and all parameters come up on the right side of the settings window. Here I can select the rectangular section profile. Next to this, the size of it can be set, length and profile size. A little lower, I can choose the position. If it is a beam, then horizontal, if column, then vertical. I select the round profile and all related parameters come up. And the polygon profile, where the important new parameter is the number of edges. I go back to the rectangular and will use that now. Here is one more option. It's a side view if I want to see it on the floor plan. On the next pages, there are many settings for 2D and 3D representation. These are not important for me right now. On the floor plan, I placed this concrete element. Next, I choose and place the stirrup element. This element is already well known. It is in the reinforcement library and opening the object settings window, I can select it. On the first tab, it is important to set the diameter and the position. Of course, I can set 2D view as well, but it's not necessary now. On the second page, I can define which type of stirrup I'd like to use for the column. There are many different types predefined. The last is a polygon. With this, I can define almost any shape. Now I select the rectangular one. Some parameters I can set here, like the bending radius, bending length, and the size. On the next tab, the placement should be defined. I have some options for it. Go to the next tab, where I find the 2D representation options. If I turn off the Use Global Library checkbox, I can select different 2D view types, and I can define other line types and pen colors. All the usual settings are available on the following pages. The next element, which I need for the reinforcement of a column, is a rebar. I select the RF underscore rebar from the library. I define the diameter and position on the first page. Somewhat lower, there is an important checkbox called single rebar. I turn it on because I only need one rebar element right now. I will not set the 2D view as I don't need it now. On the next page, the geometry of the rebar can be set. Now I set bending on one end of the rebar, which I can use for splicing up the column's reinforcement. There is a bending option for both ends of the rebar, but here I only need it on one end. Of course, on the next pages, I have options for 2D and 3D views, just like in the settings of all other elements. Okay, now I can start to create the complex reinforcement. I select the stirrup, and with the predefined hotspot, I place it into the concrete element. It's easier to do with center point. When I place the stirrup, I can align all sides to the necessary position, which is equal to the concrete cover. After this, I place the rebar to the corner of the stirrup. 
I rotate it 45 degrees and then I rotate three copies to the other corners of the stirrup. With these steps the desired reinforcement is already assembled from components. I check it in 3D and if everything is in the right place I can save it as a complex element. Going back to the floor plan I select the concrete element, the stirrup and all four rebars. Then I click on the second icon of the column tool in the reinforcement palette. A window appears. In this window I give a name to this complex element and deselect the checkbox of the cutting list. If this checkbox is on, the program will place a cutting list after I place the element. I don't need this right now, so I just click on OK. The contour of the new element is visible next to the cursor and I click. The element is placed with a label. I select this new element together with the earlier assembled one and open the 3D view. As you can see, these two column reinforcements are the same. The only difference is the assembled one still contains standalone rebars and stirrups, while the new element is one complex element. Okay, this is the process for creating columns. Now I will make a complex element for a beam. As with the column, I prepared some elements for a beam, from which the final will be created. The main difference between columns and beams is their position. First I place the RF underscore concrete element with the necessary parameters. This time it will not be vertical. First I place the RF underscore concrete element with the necessary parameters, but this time it will not be horizontal. Second I place the stirrups. Here I have to choose the horizontal position. In the diameter field I leave 6 millimeters and I will use the rectangular stirrup type. The next necessary piece is a rebar. Here, as in the first two steps, I select the horizontal position and the single rebar option. All other parameters I won't change now. I placed all elements somewhere on the floor plan because I cannot find the right position for them yet. Now I will collect the full reinforcement of this beam from these prepared elements. I select the stirrup and place it to the concrete element using the predefined hotspot. Then I do the same with the rebar. After I open the 3D view, we can see that it is still not enough. There are some rebars missing and I'm still not sure that all elements are in the correct place. I go back to the floor plan and create a section with the Archicad section tool. Here it is. It is immediately visible that the rebar is not in place. I can select it and correct the position. Because one rebar is not enough for a beam, I will mirror a copy of this rebar horizontally and I can be sure that it will be created in the correct spot. I then select the two rebars and drag a copy of them to the upper side of the section. With these two operations I created all rebars which I'd like to have in this beam. On the floor plan all four rebars are placed. If I open the 3D window I can see that all component elements are in the right position. Ok, on the floor plan I have one more prepared rebar. I prepared it earlier and it is different from other rebars in that it has a special shape. This shape I set in the settings window where I can define the ending shape and size. I leave one of the views of it, so it really is different from the others. I move this rebar to the beam. I once again open the section view window. The new element appears, but it should be aligned. I do this twice because this correction needs to be done on both ends of the rebar.
Check it in 3D. A yellow colored rebar appears in the beam. This way only one special rebar was created, but I want to have one more. Open the section view window again and select this rebar. I duplicate it, mirroring a copy horizontally. Now I have two ended rebars in the beam. I make two more. On the floor plan, these appear in the beam in a right position with yellow pen color. Now I select the bent rebars and in the settings window, I turn off the 2D side view of them. In the 3D window, all components are visible and have the right position. This means the beam reinforcement is assembled and ready to save as a complex element. Let's go back to the floor plan where I select the concrete element, the stirrup and all rebars, then I click on the second icon of the beam tool in the reinforcement palette. A similar window appears as with the column where I can set a name for the beam complex element. The cutting list checkbox is turned off now. I do not need it here. The contour of the new element appears next to the cursor and with a click I place it on the floor plan. The beam complex element is done and visible with a label. Now I select all elements. Concrete element, stirrup, rebars and the new complex one and open the 3D window. All elements are visible but while in front all elements are standalone the rear object is one complex element. Sometimes the already saved complex element needs to be modified. Of course, this too is possible in the reinforcement solution. I open the section drawing window, which I created earlier for aligning rebars to the right position. And let's say I do not need these two rebars anymore. I delete them. When I go back to the floor plan, I can see that two rebars disappeared from the editable model, but in the complex element, they are still there. These two rebars are still in the object. Now on the floor plan, I once again select the concrete element, stirrup and all rebars. Click on the third icon of the beam tool in the reinforcement palette. A small edit object window appears where I can select the related saved complex element and click on OK. With this step, the solution updated the existing complex element where it is immediately visible that the two deleted rebars disappeared. So, if you apply this beam complex element in many beams in your model, it will be automatically updated in all places on all stories of the building model. I make one more modification. I place two straight rebars in the center. I select the components and check it in 3D. I change the 3D window style to shaded and all rebars and stirrups are more visible. On the floor plan, the saved complex element is still the old one. There are no modifications on it visible. I select again the editable model and click on the third icon of the beam tool. An edit object window appears. I select the related saved complex element and click on OK. The complex beam element already has all modifications from the editable model, which I can also see in the 3D view. Ok, the complex element is done, but its components should be listed. Now let's see how that works in the add-on. It is basically the same as with meshes and rebars. I select this beam element and open the settings window. In the settings window, I already see all component elements listed one by one, which is nice, but not suitable for documentation. In this window, it is important to turn on the use for listing checkbox if it was turned off. Then click on OK. Now I click on the first icon of the cutting list tool in the reinforcement palette. The list icon appears next to the cursor and I click on the floor plan. The cutting list of this beam element is placed. 
This list contains all components of the beam element with their ID, shape, diameter, quantity, etc. Then the summed values are categorized according to diameter and quality. I select now the column complex element and open the settings window. As with the beam, there is a list of components, but it's not for documentation. So closing this window, I click on the first icon of the cutting list tool in the reinforcement palette again, and place the cutting list on the floor plan next to the element. This list contains all components and values, just like the cutting list of the beam. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at one of the email addresses in the description. You can also visit our website and find out more about our solutions. Link also in the description. Have a good day.